Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we have the Suntory Yamasaki Sherry Cask, 48% from Japan. And it's called the best whiskey in the world. Yes, our search has finally found an end. This is the best whiskey in the world. And who says that? Jim Murray in his Whiskey Bible 2015. Uh, and he gave this whiskey 97.5 points out of 100. What do I think of this? Well, I personally believe that there is no best whiskey in the world. No. And uh, in Europe and in Great Britain, uh, there were uh, press releases and, and, and press messages saying, uh, Ooh, the best whiskey in the world goes to Japan and Scotland is on the dive and uh, they stopped production of whiskey and they didn't do their homework and uh, it's five after twelve and they have to hurry because their whiskey is crap and no longer good and they didn't make their homework and Japan, Japan, Japan. <laughs> um, there might be a few things which influence those journalists, like the referendum for the independence of Scotland. And now they're happy to give them a few hits. Well, you bothered us. We tell you now. So the press multiplied this effect. Um, we have to ask ourselves, uh, what is the best whiskey from Jim Murray? typically. One of the last years it was Old Pultney, 21 years old. I tasted it and it was good, but not superb from my personal point of view. And the years before there were several artbacks as the best whiskies in the world. And then I heard, I have no proof for that, but I heard that Jim Murray uh, worked for artback for selecting casks. And when an expert selects casks for a bottling, then the whiskey must be the best he's able to make. And then he will give this whiskey the, uh, the saying, the best whiskey in the world. But we have to ask ourselves, if an expert is paid by a distillery, what is the result worth? If it was this way, I'm not quite sure. Um, Two years after another artback. Well, I don't do not feel comfortable with that. Um, and the worst in this scenario, which the journalists tell, was that in the top five there were no Scottish whiskies. Why? Didn't he get any? Uh, jobs as an expert in the Scottish whiskey industry last year. So he can't tell which is the best or he can't influence the whiskey as the best. I don't know. Um, well, for me, there are a few candidates to be the best whiskey in the world 2014. There is a Glendronach Grandeur. I took a video here. A wonderful whiskey. Or a Glendronach Tawny Port, 18 years old, oh, close to perfect. Benevis Sherry Cask, 15 year old, oh, a whiskey to die for. Berriach, 18 years, single cask, Pedro Jimenez finish. Mm -hmm. It's mouth watering even thinking about this whiskey. Or the Balvinis, the 17 year double wood, oh, an excellent whiskey. Or the single barrel Sherry Cask, Balvini, 16 or 15 years old, and the 16 years triple casks. Wonderful absolutely wonderful whiskies. So the predicate, the best whisky in the world is the saying of a single expert. If I tell you this is and that is the best whisky in the world, then it's my personal opinion. And to tell then to give the multiplier in, in the press to say uh, Scotland is gone, lost forever. It's ridiculous. It's a single. It was no panel. It was no blind tasting. All the whiskies were 
or this whiskey was visible. What is this ruling? This points 97.5 out of 100. What is this worth? Well, if you look into his Bible and you feel comfortable with his ratings, then this will be the thing for you. You can follow him. But if you have from time to time the idea, oh, mm, no, I think differently, uh, then you have to be careful. And I, for myself, I'm able to go, go a certain way with Jim Murray, but in certain points I can't follow him because he has learned taste differently, because only a few, a few tastes uh, are inherited, is done uh, through genes in, on your tongue, but the rest is learned and brought to the olfactory center in your brain by thousands of nerves going through the forward plate of your skull. So it's learned, and if you <laughs> have a park with, with, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, weird sauce, which is very popular in the UK, mint mint sauce, wild park with mint sauce. If you can't, or if you do not have the experience of this, you can't uh, follow somebody who finds mint in a whiskey from the UK. So you have to be always careful uh, of the experience a certain person has in which corner of the world this person was raised and uh, educated his, his brain, his taste memory. Okay, so what's on the card box? This Yamasaki single malt whiskey sherry cask bottled in 2013. Uh, no age statement on it. How old is this? I can't tell you. The oldest distillery in Japan, Yamasaki Distillery. 48% non-chill filtered. In the bottle it's the same and there's a small leaflet in here telling whiskey distilling in Japan starts with Shinjiro Tori who made Japan's first whiskey at the Yamasaki distillery in 1923, so close to 100 years. In the autumn of the following year, he distilled in the Japanese made pot stills and put the newly made spirit into casks. The first cask to be stored in the Yamasaki warehouse was made from Spanish oak cask. From this beginning, Shinjiro Tori built the foundations for Suntory whiskey of today despite of many difficulties. <laughs> yes, a world war in between. The sherry cask that has matured this Yamasaki whiskey was made from Spanish oak. European oak might be intense, spicy. In Spain, to Suntory's exacting specifications. The casks are in accordance, the casks plural, so this is no single cask, it's a mixture of several casks, are in accordance with Suntory's uncompromising specification filled with Oloroso sherry and seasoned over three years there. So we have not only a single year of sherry cask maturation, but three. I personally believe that it makes no difference in terms of the sherry intensity. Uh, if the sherry tries to go into the wood for a year, for two or for three as long as it is in uh, for a full season, then you will have the sherry aroma. But over three years, the sherry will extract tannins and bitter substances out of the staves of the cask and the ends of the cask and uh, will tear off the first bitterness of the European oak. So that for the whiskey, uh, the rest, the residue coming out of the cask is not that bitter. The tannins and other polyphenols contained in the Spanish oak imbue the spirit with a darker reddish hue than is found with commonly used American white oak casks. So this is a little reddish, yes. Uh, the traditional sherry cask is thus one of the cradles in which Yamasaki single malt whiskies are nurtured. We invite you to sit back and enjoy 
its rich fruity aromas and the excellent balance of sweet and sour flavors all courtesy of carefully selected Spanish oak. Tasting notes, color, deep bronze, aroma, resins, ripe melons, chocolates, taste, sweet and mild, slight bitterness, finish, delicate sweetness, slight bitterness that extends pleasantly. The back, no, <laughs> all Japanese. <laughs> so this is no cork, it's a screw cap, and this is a good screw cap. There's a ceiling in the screw cap, and there will be no uh, miss smells like TCA from this uh, cap. So this shows the search for excellence in the Japanese world. If a cork is able to bring bad taste in a whiskey, allow evaporation allow oxidization, then we avoid cork and take a screw cap. <sighs> Full, immense, heavy, very fruity, vanilla and caramel, light sweetness and in the back some oranges. So there's the sweetness of the fruit and the slight sourness of the orange. And in the back there is some some aromatic substance which I sometimes find in American, in Kentucky Straight Bourbon whiskies, as well as in Irish whiskies, and I trace that back to extreme wood influence. And this is some, well, some taste of, of glue, over aromatic. This is typically from the heavy cask influence in a whiskey. So the distillery character is covered by the Spanish oak. There's very few of the distillery character coming through, 48%. You can't find a, a, sim, a single uh, ethanol molecule in your nose, no. All is about cask, about sherry, about spiciness. Mmm! <laughs> oh! Heavy impact. There is a spiciness, and in the middle, there's a sweetness. It's mouth watering. And yes, the sweetness is vanishing, the bitterness is appearing. Quite heavy bitterness. This is not a, a light bitterness. Light bitterness, no. This is more. And everything goes quite fast. The aftertaste is not that long, but the bitterness, the oakiness stays for longer. Is this the best whiskey in the world? From my point of view, no. It has a, a flaw in the nose because of this remembrance of glue. And in the aftertaste it's far too bitter, far too long bitter. And the pleasant, the really pleasant notes in this whiskey vanish far too, far too fast. So this is a very good whiskey and I tasted the 18 years old already. I'm not quite sure if I have tasted it in English language already. This is one of my very best, the Yamasaki 18 years old. And uh, this is not that elegant, not that balanced. It has a, yes, too much of cask. 
if you look down in the books and read a little bit, uh, you find uh, that this is not in the book. In, in the internet, you find that this, this whiskey shall contain whiskies with 12 and 15 years of age, from 12 to 15 years of age. Um, why do, don't they write a number, an age statement on the label? Perhaps there's one young cask in it to bring more of the distillery character to the whiskey and then they can't write uh, 12 or 15 years on the label. Uh, or they omit the numbers because it looks better without a number. This calligraphic <laughs> thing of the Japanese, uh, I can't tell you. Um, Jimori says this whiskey is near indescribable genius with a nose of exquisite boldness and a finish of light teasing spice. So this is for me is over the top, it's far too much Sher uh, cask, far too much oak. Uh, even the sherry is pushed to a side by this heavy spiciness. The nose is close to perfect, but in the B rating there is this remembrance of glue due to the heavy oak. And the bitterness is coming. No light bitterness, a stronger bitterness. So if I would have to give points for this whiskey and I refuse to give points because my my daily uh, feeling if I'm happy, if I'm sad, uh, this all has an influence of my tasting. Uh, I can't tell you one day it will be 85 points, the other day it will be 80. Um, what I've eaten before may make a difference. So I take these videos in the evening before dinner so that my taste buds had time from lunch uh, to relax. I did, do not drink uh, coffee or tea or something uh, before just pure water, before going for my tasting, but there will still be influences. And in the morning my taste buds would be better off than in the evening or in the late afternoon. So telling you that this one is the best risk in the world is far from my intention. It's a good one, but uh, is it worth more than a hundred euros, pounds, dollars? Take a Yamasaki, 18 years old. It's, from my personal point of view, at least equally good to this one. It's still bitter in my mouth. So if you like dark chocolate, 90%, then this one is for you. Um, well, but I've seen uh, a bottle on eBay for 700 euros, quite a lot. Um, I don't think that this bottle has that value at all. There will be more whiskey from Yamasaki coming out. So have a look at those bottles and I will shortly tomorrow show you the next Yamasaki without an aid statement uh, here on my cask. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come and feel free to share this video with your friends.